have a seat at the table with some men with confidence. Yeah. And welcome to Men in Confidence Sharing, where we, the men of a certain age, share our thoughts, ideas, and opinions in confidence. And today, we're joined by the whole crew. We have Sean, we have Rhino, and we have Terrence. We're going to say hello to everyone. Hello, Sean. Hey, everybody. How y'all doing? Hello, Rhino. What's good, everybody? And hello, Terrence. Greetings and salutations, good peoples. Thank you for returning, everyone. And today, we have a new topic. Uh, Our last topic was talking about sex and intimacy, and we're kind of branching off with a similar topic, topic, talking about the sexualization of the black man. So I'm going to pose the question to everyone. Paint a picture or describe to me what you think of when you hear the sexual sexualization of black men. How do you think society sees us? All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get out here on point with this one and say, for me, I feel like people see us in one of two ways. They either see us as these like hyper aggressive, super like predatory beings who are constantly looking to, you know, ravish and like have our way with hordes of women, right? Or they try to put us in this new black basket of being in the closet or you know on the down low or you know and i'm not trying to say that as if it's like being as if homophobic being not homophobic but uh homosexual that's what i'm trying to say i'm not trying to say it as if that's a bad thing it's just that's the other end of the spectrum it's either you're one or the other there's no in between there's no just regular dude is you're either out here hunting literally women or you're probably hunting guys if you're being pushed into that homosexual category it but either way neither one of them are just like being seen as a person you're seen as one or the other that's kind of my take I think we're looked at with high and unrealistic expectations. Um, I remember years ago when I was in the military and I had to change in front of a bunch of other guys. Um, I remember a guy, I didn't see him looking at me, but I changed my shirt because we were getting ready for PT and he was like, oh man, I thought you was ripped. And I'm like, why are you even looking at me? What's what's going on here, um, fella? Almost said his name. <laughs> but what's going on here, fella? What's the deal? You know, and I think people look at us that way. We're we're all expected to have this certain look. We're all expected to be gang banging thugs, gangster. We're all expected to have at least ten inches, at least eight, at the least. And it's like. Where does this where is this coming from? Why is society having these high unrealistic expectations of me? You know, and and if I if I don't fit the bill, then there's a problem with me. You know, and I've I've seen women be shamed over their bodies because they were fat or or or, or whatever. And it's generally frowned upon. It's like, no, you do not do that. But when it happens to me, it's like, oh, suck it up. <laughs> Be a man. <laughs> Be a man and suck it up. What, what, why are you tripping? You know, we're heavily sexualized to the point that I was sexually assaulted by a higher ranking member uh, of the Marine Corps in my unit and it happened in front of everybody and I stopped and I was like she didn't just do that and then my next question was what am I going to do about it 
And my answer was, I'm not going to do nothing about it. Because if I do anything about it, I'm going to be shamed. And it's just, I just want to finish my time and get out of Marine Corps. <laughs> so we are absolutely sexualized by society. And if you say something, what's your problem? Why are you tripping? <laughs> that's, that's the response. You know, be a man, man up, drive on. Okay, okay, but if I did it to to uh, someone, I'm going to jail. You know, but yeah, that's how I feel that we are treated. So. Okay, so yeah, um, <clears throat> I'm going basically, you know, piggyback and agree. First thing I do want to say, uh, I didn't know that happened to you, my friend. And uh, sorry that that did happen in that way. I know you, you know, wasn't necessarily saying it to to get that. But anytime I hear something surprising like that about an assault, something like that, I'm like, hey, man, you know, we don't want that happening to anybody. You know, we don't have these conversations enough about the fact that, yeah, you know, um, when it comes down to assault and stuff like that, men and black men also can be assaulted. You know what I'm saying? As well. So. Um, but going back, you know, I'll say that, yeah, I agree with, I agree with you all, especially on the stereo, that there are huge stereotypes on the sexual sexualization of black men. I mean, just in general, stereotypes in general, of course, um, I think of it in terms of setting a scenario in my mind that if, uh, you know, if I was out there single life and I was, you know, had per chance, you know, started talking to, um, a woman of a different race, um, Hispanic, Caucasian, whatever. And she's telling her family, you know, I'm finally ready to meet them. And we're, he's supposed to be coming by. You know, my boyfriend is black or whatever. And there's a, a certain point of terror that's going to be in my mind because I'm thinking to myself, okay, who they're expecting to show up isn't getting ready to show up. <laughs> what her family has in their mind, what I'm thinking of, even even me, stereotype of my, our, you know, because because I know what the thought process is, right? You know, tall, you know, slim, you know what I'm saying? Or he's a cut or some beast of a looking guy that comes in, it just comes in like in a, you know, like a guy you would be, would be formidable, somebody that, you know, they might be like, okay, they're they're probably making sure they know where all their weapons are in the house, things like that, in case I get kind of crazy, <laughs> or in case I'm a nut or from that standpoint, because they're expecting something different. When I show up, when this short little black guy shows up, it's like, ah, oh. <laughs> that's not what we expected, you know what I mean? Um, that's going, you know, physical appearance. I agree, Rhino. I didn't know you were going to open that bag, but I do agree that there is, yeah, as far as on prowess, there's a lot of pressure. There becomes a lot of pressure with us, with our own, whatever women that we're with. There becomes a lot of pressure because there's an automatic assumption that we are going to have outstanding physical prowess in bed. We're going to have outstanding physical features even if even to look at me from that standpoint yeah he might be okay so he's, he's short he, he, you know he's a short bald-headed guy but i bet you he's still swinging like well sorry <laughs> i gotta blow your misconception out the water <laughs> does it mean that i'm not good or whatever the case may be at what i do just means you may find that you walked into a stereotype and it does it does absolutely happen what we see on tv i think that the media somewhat is to blame for some of this stuff who you know who gets selected for the roles and who's uh the standouts as as what's being hailed as you know what it takes to look good as a black guy you know what i'm saying so yeah i absolutely agree with what ron was saying um and that is to answer the question that's what i think is seen and is visualized uh when you know when they talk about okay there's a black guy or whatever when you think about a black guy in sex thank you very much fellas and i'm i'm in line in agreement with pretty much all of you i do want to touch on something that terrence hinted at though or Terrence said like it feels like they 
it feels like the world expects for you to and I'm, I'm going to be very careful with the words I use unintentional it feels like the world expects you to be a sexual monster right or a sexual animal and I'm saying that on purpose because it doesn't feel like it's a human expectation right it feels like you're more of a a beast or, or an animal and if you just so happen to not be that sexual animal that they think oh it doesn't mean that you're not a sexual animal it means that you are just a same sex sexual animal you're you're just not interested in the woman You so now you want another dude you're still that sexual animal it's just that it's pointed in a different direction so it's like you can't there's there's no room for you to be sexually in control like it's no room for the expectation that you can have sexual discretion right and it feels like that's pushed a lot from society as well as you know the expectation body wise and performance wise and all that other stuff so let me ask you this when it comes to societal expectations it feels like they tell us that we're the ones that are sexually preying on everything where it more feels like that's what you want me to do you see what I'm saying if you like it's a seesaw and it's I'm not quite sure how to ask this question but what do you feel about the societal pressures of being a sexual creature or being a creature expected to be sexual well I since so there's nobody grabbed it right away. I'll um, I'll jump on it. I'll say you know, it is like I like I was saying from before. There's a little bit of a pressure, um, you know, to be you know, as Tony says, a beast. You know, um, you're expected to be on that level, and if you're not on that level, then it's like, oh, okay, yeah, you must be on the other side of the fence. I kind of see also too where he's going from a standpoint of, uh they think it's inherent in us that you know all of us are like that you know what i mean nothing is an absolute if if anything it's actually you know it could it's possible that more of us are actually not like that where we're the ones out there trying to say well i want i don't want one woman i want five i'm a beast of the land i'm out here trying to do that but you know and then i think also what tony was also trying to point out is like when you because when you're not like that that's what you're expected to be. You see what I'm saying? It's like, I got to meet the expectation of what you you think I am, you know? Cause when I come in and it's like, that's not what it is. It's almost like, you know, you have these issues where you it's not believe that that's not what it is. You know what I mean? You're, it's the perception that runs so deep that it's, you still think I got three or four women lined up over here, or I'm going to be doing that with three or four. I'm telling you, I'm faithful. I love you, but never do that to you. I'm a one woman man, ha ha, or whatever. And if that's the, even if that's the case, once you're doing all of that to convince, like, what was wrong with you? <laughs> like, do you just not like women? Like, no, but I'm trying to tell you, <laughs> I want one woman. That's what I'm saying. I want one at a time. I'm not trying to do all of that. You know what I mean? But it, it is, it is, and it, it's tremendous. Uh, I guess they use, like I say, pressure. We don't talk about this enough. That's for sure. It's, it's kind of a, a topic like as i'm wrapping my head around it you know it's definitely not talked about from this angle as much nobody likes to talk about what you're expected to be what you're supposed to do and you may want to do something entirely different and opposite i may want to you know bring out a feather you know with my se- with my sexual partner or whatever the case may be <laughs> you know what i'm saying exactly i seen terrace's face with that i know he's gonna get but I'm just saying. I got no comment. I'm just like, that, that's that's a unique thing. Yeah, but, but that, you and know, that's what I'm saying. Whatever. 
you say something like that, you know what I mean? And that is not expected, you know, for, hey, I got a treat for you tonight, girl. Watch this. Close your eyes. You feel that? <laughs> what is on me? Is there something crawling on me? <laughs> no, this is feather. You ain't know. <laughs> yeah, he's yeah, he's on us. <laughs> and now you can't that be I yourself. get from all of this is, I think, <clears throat> I think, the society expects us to be just like them. <laughs> And I'm keeping that broad. Everybody isn't like you. Like, I remember one time there was this guy, uh, you know, his daughter uh, was um, looking to get married and she was looking to meet somebody. And, um, he had a vested interest in making sure that you know, he kept his daughter safe and that, you know, she met the right kind of a man. And that... <laughs> the man well long story short um i would talk to his daughter not out of interest in her because i wasn't interested in her i, I she was like really way too young for me but you know just like i'm i'm just i'm just a nice guy i like to talk to people and i was talking to her once and i was just being nice and making her laugh and whatnot but i wasn't interested in her <laughs> and i remember him um, visually, I remember his expression on his face and how he sent her away and urged her to move along. And uh, I'm sitting there thinking to myself, dude, I don't want your daughter. She, I, I don't roll like that. Sorry. I remember talking with some friends, uh, oh, associates, friends, associates, um, other friends, associates from here in Washington. And they were talking about uh, a girl, I was probably what, 24, 25 at the time and they were talking about the girl and and I've, I discovered through listening to them talk that the girl was like in her mid to late teens and I'm like are you serious? That's a little girl <laughs> and they found it hard to believe that I would not, not have tried to talk to her and I'm like no, that's a child <laughs> why is that hard for you to understand that is a child so I I I, I think they expect you to be like them but we're not like them I, or at least I'm not like them I, I, I don't do that I, I'm not looking to find my next sexual conquest I'm not looking to go out and rape someone that's I don't, I don't first of all i can't even wrap my mind around why somebody would want to do something like rape. I, I i literally can't wrap i thought about it over the years on how somebody could do that what would drive them to do that and i looked at the research data and it just doesn't make sense to me it still doesn't make sense to me but um being, that's a good thing that that makes sense Trust right me. but but being hypersexual like we're portrayed I'm not no I'm not I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to do that <laughs> are you serious people get diseases like that but um I I am all about proving people wrong um I'm I'm, I'm glad to not fit into anyone's particular box onto anyone's particular self um yeah wonderful that's not me <laughs> you may think that that's not me um no i don't have six packs of abs anymore <laughs> it's all just a keg now um I, i'm not gonna I'm, I'm sorry i'm just not gonna fit into your to your perfect little sleeve if, if that's what you're looking for then i'm not the guy keep it moving <laughs> so um my first thought was projection is a horrific thing sometimes and projection is absolutely something I feel that happens with black men other people have these ideas and thoughts and opinions of us and they just kind of instantly assume that that's everybody and 
like Sean said, the truth of the matter is more of us are probably so far away from that stereotype and idea that had you taken time to consider it, you'd realize how ridiculous an idea it actually is. You know, um, the second thing I've noticed is that this is definitely not an easy conversation to have or not an easy thing to talk about because there's a certain air of I'm trying to choose my words correctly because I don't want to say power but there's a certain amount of like cachet you get from the stereotype you know because people think a certain way about you they treat you a certain way you know people but want to cozy up to you who may not necessarily cozy up to you under normal circumstances but because they think oh i might just have the time of my life if i get in the right and that can be a powerful thing that can be addicting that can make you feel good that can make your that can definitely boost your ego and as men more times than not our egos are absolutely in play with the majority of things that we do so that's that's yes, not something to discount or ignore and it just kind of leads leads to the idea and lends to that stereotype and lends to that uh perception that oh yeah he's buying into it he's feeding into it he's digging it because that's what he wants when no I, i'm just a little bit of a narcissist i got a little bit of an ego and i i, I feel good right yeah you're making me feel good right now so i'm feeling myself it ain't changed what's happening with me physically you know i don't add an extra inch or two because my ego has been stroked and feels that no that's not how nature and genetics work so it's just an unfortunate circumstance i think for us as black men to have to carry this burden of people looking at us like being beasts and it really speaks to not to get too radical here but it speaks to the history of how we were treated in the beginning you know from the inception of us being here and picked and prodded and ogled and looked over like cattle and the shift is transfer it's almost as if there's been a shift and you know it's less about how much work you can do physically with in regards to like how much labor, but how much work you can put in, how much pipe you can lay down, how much, you know, stamina you got, how many rounds you can get in. How, and I've never been a person who's been like looked at as like, oh my gosh, that dude like there. Yes, I know he's going to be able to Or maybe I have and I just wasn't aware of it but because I don't think of myself in that light I wouldn't want to be seen that way uh, it's uncomfortable it's not cool it's it's sad I think is the best way to put it it's truthfully just a sad circumstance and it's unfortunate that black men have to carry such a stigma the worst experience of my life was being on the other side of that fence thinking about how I was as a, a young man unlearned and stupid and, and oogling women ogling women and, and uh, saying different and very stupid things that I wouldn't dare say today um, and to be on the other side of that and to be looked at like that <laughs> and it just it's just a weird like oh oh and, and, and sometimes I just had to just had to let it slide because I, I just I just figured oh karma's come back to lay the smack down and get paid so here you go karma you're, you're very welcome let's do business again <laughs> so when it comes to how people look at you and how people think about you 
I want you to talk about where you've shown discretion or you've shown control. Like the times where you don't act like an animal, but you act like that black person and you show some sexual discretion where you don't just break rules and break laws <laughs> like when you don't do those things and you show some type of restraint how do people treat you like if 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 you get into a situation and you can tell that the woman is interested and you say no or you say not right now what's the reaction that you get towards that I've gotten animosity I've gotten anim- I stayed up animosity <laughs> I've <laughs> I, uh, I, I remember there was this lady that she really liked me I it's not that I didn't like her it's not that she wasn't good looking it wasn't it's nothing like that she was absolutely attractive my problem was she had three kids and at my age at that time I wasn't ready to be a father of three and in fact I even thought about it I'm like how would I get the money to to take care of a family of four really five including myself and I just I, I, I never talked to her I knew she was interested but I ran I I literally I didn't literally take off running, but I avoided her. And when people came and talked to me, said, "Hey, you know, so and so likes you, right?" Yeah, excuse me, excuse me, and I'm out of there because I'm like, no, I'm not, I'm not ready to be daddy. Just add water, you know. And sadly enough, that lady figured it out. And she got the message. But I don't think she got the message that I'm just not ready to be daddy material yet. I I think maybe she thought maybe I hated her or, or whatever. And she just the cold treatment that I got from her was was telling enough. Um another girl, um, she was sending me all the signals of come and take me right now and all I had to do was close the door and the blinds but um, in my mind I'm, I'm, I'm such an oblivious dude that all of her signals went over my head and it wasn't until later on that I was like oh my goodness that white girl really wanted me but um, <laughs> um, I just it just it just I, I just had to let it go. I, I I just had to let it go. But um, she didn't. At least she didn't treat me, you know, as bad as the 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 other lady. But um, she moved on. She get it. She got it. She moved on. She she's she's fine. She's fine. <laughs> but um, yeah, there were there were other times. It's like, no, I'm. I don't know what you thought was going to happen, but. You got the wrong person. I'm not doing that. <laughs> I'm not. I'm. I, I. I can't read your mind. I don't know what you want. And even if I knew what you want, I wasn't gonna give you that. <laughs> and and believe it or not, some of these women were married. They were married, and it's like you got a whole husband, and you want what? Nah, you got the wrong person. I'm, I'm not gonna be the one being hunted by some dude with some 38 looking for me. Hey, you, you, no, no, I'm not the one. I am not who you think you think I am. I am not him. So, yeah, I've had some close calls, to say the least. We probably, we probably, you know, all have, I, to, to go back to Tony's question and, and to capitalize on what Brian was saying, because it's the same thing. I, I, and, had some experiences where once you do you know if you ever find yourself in a situation where you're thinking 
because you're thinking ahead you know you're thinking okay wait a minute i'm xyz years old i don't want any children i don't have what i should have and so this is going to be a no i'm going to actually uh show the you know what i mean she's offering sure but it's like no and i've always been met with well not always but at times there's some disbelief like did you just say no are you turning me down right now do you know what i just offered you do you understand what's happening here <laughs> like i i chose you to do this and you you're telling me no you know what I mean? and then you get you know after that it depends you know you might get met with anger or whatever the case may be you have to use then you know you you have to i find myself i'm defending myself well i don't i don't have anything you do you have oh no i don't have anything okay so why doesn't it make sense for me to say no right now yeah you know what I mean? and this is even in just this instance how can you say that i can't have said no right now that's what it is you, you don't expect me to have the control the fortitude to have been able to control this you thought you was going to start something and then I was going to finish it and that was what it was going to be because I had no control again the beast mentality right the the mentality that you have to do this from that standpoint and you don't um my message to you know everybody out there and finds themselves in the same situation you don't you still have control and you can flex that control but it is difficult because you know exerting that control is like it's almost like an automatic peer pressure the you know and to kind of capitalize on something that i feel like terrence was trying to say or an idea i got at least when he was talking like who doesn't want an automatic rep right we haven't we're talking about a stereotype here right now that most black men take to like y'all complain about this like they're listening to that so i think going am i getting this right are y'all actually complaining that we have the stereotype that we are bulls of the land who gonna lay it down with 10 inches you know y'all don't y'all don't want that rep no don't get me wrong i'm i've, I've been fine <laughs> of course trying to take advantage of that but at the same time there is a pressure if you feel like you're not there you don't want to do that that's not your style be be you know able we should be able to say that this is not me i don't want to wind up out there with three and four children just because you know what i'm saying i was supposed to take advantage of every opportunity that i had because of what was perceived because of what the perception was or because it showed a vulnerability because it looks like it shows in order to not do that you know i'm saying that i'm not a bull i'm not a beast or i'm not on that level you know of of sexual prowess or whatever the case may be you can have control and we we had a a segment and go back and listen if you haven't heard it be in control right as far as our 10 men commandments so this to me Ten men goes this playlist is in, in is is available there you go Please post the playlist that's what i was looking for that's what i was looking for so post the list post the playlist pump the playlist and uh but you know this is part of what we were saying to be in control and don't be ashamed uh and shamed into not you know not being in control or giving up your control um you know to put you in a situation if if, if you're using your mind you're smart you're losing that your smarts in that situation like rhino was saying is that situation he avoided some some headaches some major headaches i'm sure that he could have had and you know we've all been there and i would much rather do that uh then to okay yeah i showed off what you thought of me as a black male and then winded up landing myself in a lot more problems so so i heard sean mention this word a lot control right restraint you know as he was talking i kept hearing uh one of my favorite lines from Hamilton in my head. I am the one thing in life I can't control. Control. You know, it ain't just for Miss Jackson. I, I got control too. So um I do have self-restraint and control. And sorry if that somehow doesn't sit well with what you're feeling at the moment. 
I don't know that I've personally had a lot of situations where I've had to kind of exhibit like, like oh, you know what? Uh, nah, I'm a pass. I, I, I'm not here with you in that moment. You know, I, I think I'm much like my friend Rhino in the sense of uh, being somewhat oblivious. So I, I will own that and wear that cone of obliviousness proudly. But if ever presents, like, nah, I, I mean, I understand situations come up and things can get hot and heavy or whatever. But at the end of the day, it's like, look, if I'm not feeling it, I just can't. I, I, I'm not. It can't happen. Sorry. It's also easy to stay in this position that I am now because I'm a married man and I'm not out there like that no more. So I acknowledge that too. I'm just saying is I don't know. That's not my lot in life. And I'm thankful for it. But overall, for anybody listening who may find themselves kind of in that situation, you absolutely have a choice. You don't have to be, you know, headboard breaking, you know, Dexter St. Jacques. You know, for those who don't get Dexter St. Jacques reference, Eddie Murphy, look it up. You know, I'm not going to go into detail. But, um, oh man, I thought that was, I thought it was an actor. I, I was trying to remember that the guy. <laughs> thought it was the porn actor or something. Now, I was trying to remember a guy. I was like, bro, I've seen uh, him in in I, in, I, I in that. Look, now I don't know them types of people. Sorry. <laughs> um, I, I do. Just, I, I'll admit that too. Okay. No, I'm, just, I'm messing with you, man. Go ahead, go ahead. Okay. Anyway, oh um, yeah, I, I was talking about the fictitious uh, character Eddie Murphy made up. It was a funny bit. Anyway. All of that to say, anybody listening, black man, brothers, you have absolute say over yourself. You are not just some mindless, uncontrollable savage who has to be led around by an erection. That's not the case. We often tell ourselves, make sure you're thinking with the right head. That's a very real and like plausible thing. You don't have to be led around by that. You absolutely have a tool between your two ears that controls everything. Even sticky situations like, you know, somebody throwing a little something at you. You are entitled. You have the room and opportunity and space and right to say, nah, I'm good. Or not right now or whatever is appropriate at that time. You don't just have to fold and give in and be like, oh, me no have sense but me have heart so we go go and nah nah that's not who we are we are much better than that sometimes you gotta remove yourself from the situation that bit of obliviousness that I experienced that one particular person that rescued me (laughs) because if I got it if I picked up on the hints this may be a different story but I'm, I'm thankful for that bit of obliviousness. And and also you gotta think ahead as well. You gotta understand that regardless of your race, you gotta understand you're you're a man. A woman can call a cop and say, hey, he hit me, and they're gonna they're gonna put you in cuffs. At the least, they're gonna put you in cuffs. <laughs> so you gotta you gotta think about these things. You gotta think ahead. You gotta you gotta look out for yourself and if if you know that um that's your weakness standing in front of you enticing you you've got to grab a hold of that first um chance to exit and get out of there don't don't just sit around and just let it take you down okay so that could almost spin off into its own topic the criminalization of black men <laughs> but I think one of the cool. things that that gets me is the audacity to say no or to refuse or to even say later right I think that the first thing that comes to mind is you're not straight on 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Like something wrong with you? Don't work. Why does my sexuality has to be attacked? If I'm single, my sexuality is attacked. <laughs> if I say no, my sexuality is attacked. Like, really? Because you're supposed to take it. You're, you're like a plant rejecting sunlight and water. Like, it's what you do. Right. It's what you're, suppo- it's what you're supposed to do. And it's, it's, it's interesting because I feel like I don't have a direction with it because that's just the way it is, right? That's just the way it is. That's, that's like drop the mic level right there. That's like, that's, that's it. Yeah, so I guess my question would be this. Like, this is the way that we are now. How do we change perception? I don't know, but we gotta start some super hashtag that's gonna that's gonna go around the world or, or what. But you know, because I'm, I'm sitting here and I'm thinking about stereotypes and that one stereotype that grinds my gears. That stereotype that black men are terrible fathers. And there was a there was a girl, and she just happened to have them. She just happened to be white. I would have loved to get with her, but I knew about her friends and I knew about her family, and they would have fought us and they would have fought our relationship tooth and nail, and until finally they got me out of the picture. And then they could say, "See, I told you, black men are terrible fathers, and terrible husbands. You never should have got with that guy." Uh, statistically, black men are the best fathers. But keep going. Right, and, and and I'm not. What I'm saying is, um, it it tears me up when I hear people promote that we aren't. And I'm like, y'all don't y'all don't know the black men that I know, <laughs> All right? I've known too many black good black fathers out there, and I know some that are good black fathers. But for some reason, Hollywood wants to capitalize on the uh, the more urban experience and I'm like what what urban areas are you in <laughs> what urban areas are you pulling from where, where, where are you getting this nonsense you know but all of a sudden it's too impossible for um, Heathcliff Huxable and Claire Huxable to to have a family <laughs> because he's a doctor and she's a lawyer that's that's impossible it's not impossible it may be unbelievable for you because you believe all these stereotypes, but that's not unbelievable to, to, to me and to us because I know these people. <laughs> you know, see them all the time. They're everywhere. So, yeah, I guess that's all I got to say on that. Just okay. Super, <laughs> super hashtag. You you were on it. That was, that was, was it. Super, super hashtag. hashtag. I'm stealing uh, that. Maybe we got to wait to the Black History Month or maybe we can just figure something out and just send this thing around the world to get people to understand look we're not the ones <laughs> so I want to jump back in because Rhino kind of answered my question not realizing it because he, okay he brought up the idea that black men are terrible fathers right this is 2022 that's what we were taught in the 80s and 90s, right? Like, right. we were taught that a generation ago. Right, right. Okay, so I asked the question, how do we change perception? I think that's how you do it. Okay, so we were taught that a generation ago. So, an entire generation of black men grew up knowing that that's how we were viewed. So, when we were little kids, we said, you know what? I don't like that perception. I'm going to be the opposite. So now, it's not the same as it was 30 years ago. That black men are statistically the most involved parents, you know, or the most involved fathers out of all races in the the United States. Like, we are more involved than 
than a Caucasian, than, you know, Hispanic, you know, than all other races. Because we grew up with that stigma. And we knew that we had to do something different in order to change it. So, in a, in a, in a weird way, that kind of answers the question. But I'll, I'll still leave it out there for y'all to, to talk about. Oh, sure. It, it may answer the question. I, I'm sorry, I got it. <laughs> um, just thinking about the way that I grew up. Um, a part of the reason why I actually don't have kids now is because I didn't want my kid to be like me. Now, my dad was bipolar. And he had, he had his issues, and there was a huge reason for my mother to not be involved with him anymore. Um, she didn't she didn't really knew, but she found out um, after I was growing in her belly that, yeah, that's, this guy's a bad idea. But um, um, as a kid coming up, realizing my parental situation, I didn't want to make a kid and have a kid out there and I not be involved in in that kid's life either me and the mother and I even understood that well what if she doesn't want me well then fine I'm still going to be a father to my kids they're still going to have a home they're still going to have um, you know whatever they need to make their lives comfortable they're not going to have to take me to court I'm going to be there you know, so I already had that in my head it, it, to the point that if a, 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 a girl or, or a man shows up and says, hey, do you know so-and-so? Oh, yeah, I, knew, I, I remember her back in the day. She's my mother. Mm, nice. Um, how's she doing these days? Well, <laughs> you know, what, what are you trying to say, dude? You're my, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm your father? I would be devastated to find that I have a kid out there that doesn't know me and doesn't have me in their life to share my years of, 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 of knowledge with them. But you know, that's, that's all I got to say about that front. We, we're, um, we're, we're touching on some other topics from that standpoint. So I'm going to try to bring it back i know the so the, the the question was posed by tony he said you know so how can we change change these perceptions but ronald did did bring up a great point when he said that you know it's it's about the want first of all to look at something and say okay we need to change it and that's the part of what ronald said that i wanted to get on first of all say we need to change it but second on this particular topic and talking about changing it you know having conversations like this which we we all just agreed we don't have these conversations we we don't have the conversations that are put out and to say that you know hey son hey young man you can make this decision you know you don't have to be you know and don't have to fall into the stereotype first of all the stereotype exists this is what they think this is what they think we are as far as the way we react to it sexually and then second you don't have to be that and that's the other thing matter of fact strive to be different and that you know just for me i would say the answer to that question is is especially on this having to have that we got to open up the, the the uh limits of conversation first of all you know what i'm saying and start having conversations about this first of all to recognize that yes it is there it does exist and you know you know, you can make a choice not to be it. Okay, so um, everybody's saying some really good stuff here. And for me, the best way to kind of buck the stereotype kind of ties along in my mind with what we were saying with uh, those of us who grew up in situations being one way and purposely making an effort to do something different I would say my answer to the question would be seeing is believing and by seeing is believing what I mean is showing that there's a different way showing a different and better example showing that nah I don't, I don't have to be this you know conqueror of all things female and uh 
notching my belt at every turn, showing that I can be, you know, dedicated, devoted here to one person, one family, one woman, and being quite content and okay with that. And then in doing so, showing posterity, both girls and boys, that this is a reality because they're going to be the ones who would have to carry that f- forward and ensure that the stereotypes get broken. And it's equally important for both genders to see that example. That way, your girls know this ain't going to be acceptable because I know it can be done. I watch people do it. And then for sons to see, you know what? My dad did it. I won't be like my dad. And just kind of set the standard to carry forward. Seems seems pretty simple, but I know with things that seem pretty simple, they're usually easier said than done. It may take a generation, but it, it's it's a start. It's a, it's a path. It's a it's an idea. But on that note, I think we've been going for a decent amount of time. So, does anybody have anything to add before we close? Okay, well, on that note, I'll pass the chance for the close. Okay, so this was definitely an awkward, uncomfortable, but much needed conversation. And as always, thank y'all for listening. Like, share, and subscribe. God bless you. Good night. Deuce. Peace. Bye, everyone. Peace out.